If you haven't seen him yet, then it is my pleasure to introduce you to Graham Tuttle. You probably know him as the Barefoot Sprinter. He's been crushing it on social media in the past six months, reaching hundreds of thousands of people daily with his videos. His content is always fun and engaging, but more importantly, and the reason anyone ends up having success on social media platforms is that he is providing great information and content that is helping people reclaim health, athleticism, and a basic working understanding of one of the most poorly understood parts of the body, the feet. Graham's recently been spending some time in Northern California and he offered to pay me a visit at Functional Bodybuilding Headquarters. So what did I do? I met him, of course. No hesitation. What started out as an opportunity to collaborate on some content turned into so much more. We trained, taught each other valuable lessons, and discussed values, philosophy, and brand. What happens then? So your left ankle, I was just some scars going through here. Oh yeah, those are from uh, just bike accident in the last Bike year. accidents in the last year. Yeah. So what you see is like in this space. So what you get is any type of there's an ankle injury, lateral ankle sprains? Yeah, probably a lot of it. Although, yeah. I guess when I plant. That happens underneath? Yeah. So things you're looking at are like, how does this foot function? So if you stand up, actually, we'll just have you squat. I think like, what's a normal squat? So two things that are, he does really, really well. So you start to see the toes engage as you grab. So like the toes are literally grabbing the ground. So come back up and then go back down. Yeah, so you start to see what you're looking for is what happens, what's the relationship between the toes, the knee, and the hip in that sense. So it doesn't have to be straight here. It could be out to the side, Yeah. but it is interesting. So now any, any like, would you say that the hip shift is a little bit towards the right? If you have any type of hip shift? I would say. Or is it left? I would say that probably the the left side the gets left loaded more. Toes bring your toes a little bit. Now you see as you move your toes, there's a party that's pressing in. So this is that the Kelly Starrett attack and floss. So I'm pressing in right behind. So he's got his shin, his tibia that goes right here. Right behind, he's got his posterior tibialis, which is a very deep muscle. What it does is it kind of points the foot and internally rotates. And it's a, it's a strange movement pattern. So if you can kind of do a little bit of ankle ro rolling moving. So if you do it, you can do this at home with like a, a simple uh, lacrosse ball or like yep. on yourself. It's sometimes having a super friend is good. Um, but you'll start to see some of this. And so by doing this, I'm pressing in and doing that. He's moving past. And so he's creating hydration. You're getting some fluid to the tissue okay. in this deep proportion. And so what this does is there are the deep stabilizers that allow the calf to move. And this opens up. So as an example, if you do this and now take your fist, because people talk a lot about ankle mobility, right? Now, if I go and I try and bend that ankle or my wrist here, but I hold a fist as tight as possible. Now, if I let go of that, I automatically get more ankle range of motion or wrist range of motion. Yep. So as an analogy, if I'm squeezing and holding onto this, meaning my muscles are engaged, I limit my range of motion at the wrist. Yeah. But when I let go of that, all of a sudden it's there. So the toes are to the foot as the fingers are to the hand. So if I don't have the capacity to move and engage this because a portion of this calf is stabilizing these muscles all go down and they roll through, the tendons roll through the ankle to attach at different parts of the foot, to wiggle and engage the toes. So can you, uh, there's a few motions we want to think, so can you uh, flex and bend the toes there? I Meaning can I flex and extend there? And then there's a whole foot flexion and then there's those. So in the same way you can bend the uh, knuckles of the hand and then bend the foot. So there's toe flat, local toe flexion, and then global. And you get that full, so that really especially that pinky, Yep. So you start to see that. I can, the few pieces I could, it, sometimes it's helpful to just do it on the ground. Yep. Crawl underneath. I can lift my big toe, or you, you know, everything you could do functionally. I think you can even play with the middle three toes. You can spread. You can make the big toe thumbs up, which is, this is a fundamental position. Mm. So it's, it's a weird thing, because you'll see his hands working oh, a little bit. cramped. <laughs> Perfect. What you want to look for when you're doing this is the cramps. What's interesting, so the, the hallmarks of what you look at, if you want to say, are my feet healthy? There are three main hallmarks you want to look at. First, are the toes straight? So if I stand up, are my toes straight? Second, is the big toe, is there a little bit of space between the big toe in a sense? And so this goes to the shape of the foot. Everyone's going to be slightly different. So you've got a little more flat big toe. Like you've actually, it's interesting. You've got some, you've put some, when you see people who put some weight on their feet, whether it's lots of lifting, lots of like force, then you see a little more of a fat pad under the feet. So you actually, you've spent time in functional shoes and the vibram and stuff like that. 
you develop a stronger, more like a fat under your feet in a sense because it keeps them healthy, right? Yeah. Um, but within that, so are the toes straight? Is there some spacing between the big toe? And so you see, he's he's got decently meaning like what you you don't want the bunny in position. So if your mm -hmm. big toe comes across, fundamentally that's a loss. So you actually, what you let me sort of turn. So so if the toes are straight, meaning I don't have hammer toes, I don't, they're not curled underneath. They, they can be tinted. So when you engage, if you step bounce on his left foot. See what happens with his left toes? Mm. He's literally grabbing the ground to create that tension. That's totally fine. But if the toes are crooked or they're turned in and they get hammer toes, that's gonna be an issue in between, I won't do this, this is really painful, but you can massage in between the inner or the metatarsals. So in between there, there's a lot of tissue you can massage. Second, is there space between the big toe? So if the big toe is bunioned over, meaning the big toe is pulled across, what that means is that you've got laxity and looseness on the outside of this portion. So there are no bunions without shoes. Because the, mm. some people have a predisposition that their thumb, their big toe, would point out a little bit more to the side. And so when you wear shoes that yeah. smash it in there, you get a laxity. You loosen and lose the, like, the stability of the ligaments on the outside of his foot, and the foot becomes less stable. Mm. So all things considered, as a soccer player, you've done really, really well for that. Okay. And the third thing you want to look at are these, the, the, the three lines. And so if you look at a foot, so if I engage and grab the foot, the, these fascial lines, so the back of the hand, for example. So put your hand down to demonstrate. You see the back, this is the strength of your hand and your feet. You see these fascial lines? Mm -hmm. That's your ability to create tension with the ground. And you see on his, his strong hands, he's got stronger grip than mine in a sense. If you look at someone that's got unhealthy feet, what they'll have is it's like a fattier, like, like less defined foot. They can't engage that. So if someone can grab the ground and engage that, so to see that tension, this line, so I can pull. So those are the three hallmarks. Are my toes straight? Do I have space between the big toe? Yep. And then can I spread my toes, my toes straight, and can I engage and create that fascial line? Yeah, that pinky toe on mine is pretty, pretty pulled in. It's not, yeah. let's say that doesn't look straight to me. It looks like it's yeah. kind of gotten... And you see, if you look straight close. down, his left ankle sits a little bit more in. So the hard part is for him to spread his toe and to lift up just a little bit. There, there's going to be, there's some interplay. Now the hard part is that when you have a history, if you've been doing, you've injured, you had a history of ankle sprains, your knee stuff, like your body's learned compensations. Yeah. You've learned how to work around this. So totally. there's always a question of, okay, like I, undoing that may cause some pain and issue. So it's like, there's, you know, I'm getting along. The biggest question I always ask is like, is your life serving you well? Meaning, do, are you able to run and jump, move and do the stuff? And for you, I think you're doing really well. Sure. For many people, you get to the point where they can't stand barefoot without pain. They can't yeah. walk, they can't hike, they can't, I, I don't jump anymore. I have hesitancy about my body. In that case, I'm like, okay, well, the beauty of taking your shoes off is it forces you to slow down. Like I can go do 20,000 steps and heel strike and slam and big hokas, but if I take my shoes off, I have to back off. And so that backing off and slowing down, which is like thinking about, which is, Part of the things you talk about is like let's slow down and like make sure we do things right and learn the functional yeah. patterns before we scale up and ramp up you know look at what's going on sometimes taking your shoes off forces you to slow down and yeah. so that it's in a natural pace so if you're in a situation where your body's feeling stiff and tight you can't do the things you want to do taking a little bit of time to think okay if i take my shoes off and feel what's there you start to notice some of these things and then it will heal and recover all kids develop arches and learn how to walk over the first three four years of their life and no one tells them what to do, they just do it. So your body is strong, it's just kind of getting out of your own way. Graham is a bright cat. I expect to see a lot of incredible things from him in the years to come. Of course, with Graham in town, we ditched the shoes for our workout. He was totally game to get involved in whatever I had on deck for my FBB training. The one caveat, no shoes. I love that FBB is a method that allows me to connect with and find a common training ground with just about any athlete that walks in the door. Graham was no exception, and in fact, he pushed me hard in a few areas today. So what did we do? Well, we hit a persist pump workout, and it went like this. After we warmed up, we got started with our workout by doing dense strength. Dense strength with the front squat specifically. What does that look like? Well, it's an EMOM, every minute on the minute, of five reps of front squats for 10 total minutes. That's 50 reps inside of 10 minutes at a very high rate of perceived exertion. I think we used 215 or 225 on the bar for all of these sets. And in bare feet, man, it hit my muscles very differently. I was crushed by this for days. It's interesting is if you watch the hips, the right hip sinks just a little bit more because the left knee doesn't bend as much. And you start to see that left ankle comes in. Just see that left right mm -hmm. there? Yeah. Yeah, well, do you feel any of that? 
Again, I'm here. This is, it's not yeah. about being perfect. Like this is yeah, the yeah. people get too caught up in like, is it per like nobody is perfect, right? So it's like it works. If it works and you're able to do this stuff, it's good. Yeah. I just kind of like this. All I look no, at. No, I is notice like, it. I mean, I, I feel it when I'm in there. Mm -hmm. Like, there's uh, like I said, when I'm squatting 145 pounds, it's not like yeah. I can. But when things get heavy, I I do feel like okay, there's undue pressure on one side of my body versus the other, and yeah. this created lots of problems when I was training really intensely. I texted him two days later to mention how sore I was. His response was that he didn't wanna be the first to admit it, but that he was equally destroyed. So after our front squats, we jumped into two strength balance supersets. The first was a superset of Jefferson curls and hand-supported ATG split squats. Both of these movements, we focused on range of motion, on control, and weights that were moderate to light. The second superset involved single leg back extensions on the 45 degree hyper and prone hamstring curls on the machine. Both of these exercises were targeting the posterior chain, glutes and hamstrings specifically. One was more unilateral, the other bilateral. For both supersets, we were aiming for 10 to 12 reps on each exercise. Choosing a load meant finding something that would give us an eight out of 10 when we were looking at the effort scale. The goal was not to go to failure, but we wanted to get enough stimulus that we could actually get some benefit from the training. So if you finish an exercise and you can do 10 more reps, you're not quite in the training zone yet. You wanna get closer to a weight and level of effort where at the end of a set, you've only got two to three reps left in the tank. To wrap things up, I pulled Graham into a functional pump conditioning workout. It got our breathing rate up, it targeted the posterior chain, and it also balanced out our hips that we just did a ton of powerful extension with in the squat with some hip flexion work. This is another EMOM, this time for 15 minutes. The first minute, we would ski for 12 calories. On the second minute, we performed 30 seconds of Russian swings. It was cool that we had these Russian swings going in tandem synchronized. I could tell that he was doing nasal breathing, I picked that up myself, and we were both doing nose breathing only for these sets. And then finally, for the third exercise, we would perform 30 seconds of strict knees to elbow. Something that I hadn't planned for, but immediately became apparent after the second round of this workout was that all three exercises were very grip intensive. By the final minutes of this workout hanging from the pull-up bar, my grip was smoked. If you haven't given Graham a follow, then make sure you head over to the Barefoot Sprinter on Instagram and on YouTube and check out what he's putting out on a regular basis. His content is educational, it's fun, and it's easy to engage with. Hey, if you'd like to see something specific from both of us, drop it in the comments below. Give us some ideas. I love to provide content that you actually want to see and it's going to help you in your fitness journey. And until I see you next time, make sure you kick off your shoes once or twice a week in the gym. Get barefoot. Try some training without shoes on. I promise it'll wake something up in your feet that might pay off huge for your fitness and your health. Take care.